Welcome back to the One Thing Podcast, where we all get to usher in the new age of humanity beyond Homo sapiens, which we call here at the One Thing Homo Spiritus, by practicing dancing with the one thing that individuals, communities, and countries have yet to try in mass. And that one thing is the connection to the higher self part of our true anatomy that people call by various different names. And our prime directive is to above all else, make and constantly return to this one thing connection, day in and day out, breath in and breath out, as our first step in dealing with everything in our daily life, rather than viewing problems as things we can solve separately from the one thing, which we call taught. And in this episode, which is called Eradicating Evil, is an inside job, we're going to talk about things like, does evil exist? And if so, what is it really? And what can we do about this? And in this episode, we'll discuss how to bust myths around evil and break free from the delusion that there's nothing any of us can do about it. And first, we'll begin by going through some definitions so you'll know what we mean when we, when we talk about the word evil. Yes, we will. And this is going to be a juicy episode. And the thing to know is that we're treating this really intense issue in a very lighthearted way. We want to start with the question of definitions, because Lori and I always find that unless we define what we mean by specific terms, people can get into unnecessary misunderstandings simply because they're using different definitions, not necessarily because they're really disagreeing. So let's go into uh, what what the dictionary defines evil as and what we mean by evil. Right. So the dictionary defines evil as something that is bad, malformed, malevolent. A, a malice, something that is malice, oppressed by toil, worthless, burdened, or maltreatment. So if you think about all those things, we all experience all of those things. Um, and and so the question becomes, um, is evil is evil what we have made it out to be, or is it just simply coming out from under the heavy burdens of of malformed experiences or feeling oppressed or worthless, right? So that's that's the dictionary uh, version of evil. Mm-hmm. And what, I, what I'm going to add in a, about the dictionary definition <clears throat> is a term that's connected oftentimes with evil, which is the word sin, which mm-hmm. the, de- the dictionary definition of sin is from archery, right? It's uh, the dictionary definition of sin is off the mark. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when we think of sin in the way that sin is often used in religious circles, it's very different understanding of sin than being off the mark. Same thing is true here with with evil. So um, let me let me turn evil on its side now in terms of a another framing around evil. Which is a personal uh, kind of version of evil rather th- than some kind of evil out there. Uh, the way that I define evil is protecting my own unwillingness to heal my wounds, regardless of the impact this has on myself and others. In other mm-hmm. words, I don't view evil through the the um, traditional religious definitions. I view evil in terms of impact. I don't even necessarily view evil in terms of intention, although I will hasten to add that I'm very well aware, as I think everyone is, that there are certain individuals in the world who really come from a malevolent intent, who really have evil intention. My experience is that they are by far the minority. And the majority of us who are capable of what you and I are calling evil are uh, where, where there's a disconnect between what we usually have as a good intention and uh, an impact that defies that good intention that undermines it. And my unhealed wounds are 
usually what causes a disconnect between my good intentions and my negative impacts. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. And, you know, um, we, we talk here about the one thing and we talk about it as terms like source or spirit or, you know, the divine or nature or like that. And we say things like, it doesn't matter what you call it, but you do need to call it. (laughs) You do need to call it something. And it needs to be something that feels exquisitely personal as well as universal. So another way of considering evil is, and, and we have to consider, I think it's important to consider that this word evil has been charged for centuries by religions and, you know, groups that want to control the masses by using something called evil, right? So it, it it's, it, it, I'm, I would love if we have, as we have this conversation, if you would consider, my invitation to you is to consider taking, see if you can take the charge out of evil and, and, and consider it from the ways that we're going to be talking about. And the, uh, so the other um, definition, if you will, of, of evil could be any feeling or action or even thought that is not align, in alignment with our higher self, with the source of life, right? Because the source of life does not have thoughts, feelings, and actions that are uh, anything other than benevolent and harmonious and peaceful, the opposite of, you know, the, the dictionary definition that we just went through. And furthermore, from the realms of light, and this has been, um, you can find this in multiple different sources, and I, and I mean more than five, it's, you know, dozens and dozens of sources that are not connected with each other. And that's always sort of my, in my cynical way, I I have to wait for there to be enough sources that I hear something like this from when it is sort of more on the metaphysical plane that satisfies me that it, there's actually some reality to it. And then of course I take it into my heart to, to, you know, feel into the truth of it. So from the philosophy and, and in theology, that's called the perennial wisdom or the perennial philosophy. It's the, it's the themes that cut across different traditions and are simply worded differently in each tradition, but they get at the same thing. And that's what we're going to share here. Right. So from these traditional realms, if you will, and, and, you know, when we uncover all of the human stuff, these realms are, you know, these, these pathways, these philosophies, these spokes in the wheel that lead to the same place. And that same place is that we're, you know, we're really made up of light particles, right? So from these realms of light, which include like the angelic realms or the archangel kingdoms or the ascended masters and the galactic council for healing. I mean, there's, there's energies that support and surround us all the time, whether you know about this or not. And they're, and they're helpful and benevolent sources of energy. And so what, the definition of evil is from these perspectives is that all of the life force that is serving earth and humanity, it is the, it is the accumulation. So evil is basically the accumulation of hate and fear and anger that has been building up over centuries upon centuries within the consciousness of humanity. And this has been happening since the fall from grace, which we've talked about in probably one of the first episodes, which is which is our original wound, our original separation from the one thing where human beings decided they could do this alone and disconnected from the source of life. So all of that hate and fear and anger has been building up for centuries. And the way I actually see it is it's like a dense, dark energy, and it can be inside of us. It can be in the atmosphere. It can be in the energy field, right? And this is a collective consciousness and unconsciousness. So it's both because sometimes we're aware of it and sometimes we're not. And it is in us and or around us until we do our healing work, which David referenced a, a little bit ago. So we we have to just really acknowledge that when we acknowledge that when we take responsibility for just our portion not the evil doers in the world but our portion of energy that is dense and dark which really is what the evil supposed evil evil energy is then there's less of a charge around it and it's easier to take responsibility and just do our part have you ever considered what the word evil is when spelled backwards. It's it spells live. So e i e v i l backwards is l i v e, and that is live, and that is life, right? So it's almost, 
I mean, I don't know if this is true or not, but it feels to me like a little bit of a, um, a, like a, a, a trickster kind of energy where this word would come into our consciousness and the use that we, that we have, or the use that we make of it. And then the uh, import that we put on the word evil. And it's like, oh, wow. If we, if we, unhook from all of that it's basically life and we're supposed to be returning all of our dense energy to life anyway and so that's the um that's the call of evil i'd like to add a, a couple of yeah. things um the 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 problem that i see over and over again when the whole theme of evil is brought up is that it's so laced with blame and shame mm -hmm. that becomes impossible to actually deal with in a useful, forward-moving, elevating, transcendent kind of way. So if, if I have blame attached to evil, then I am going to thrust evil outward. I'm going to project it out onto the world, and I'm going to blame the world or individuals or groups in the world for being evil so that I can wear what's called in some circles a face of innocence. And what mm -hmm. a face of innocence is, is where I basically say, they're the ones that have this set of traits and I don't, I'm just, you know, I'm just an innocent victim. I don't, I don't have anything to do with this. It's all them. So blame is a real trap because it prevents me from looking at my own versions of what Lori and I are calling evil, not the standard de dictionary definition. It prevents me from stepping into healing my own wounds, healing my own trauma, healing whatever stands between me and experiencing connection with higher love and wisdom with the one thing. And that's the shame part. If, if I stop projecting my disowned, um, evil, uh, again, or in our definition of evil, not the standard definition, if I keep projecting our definition of evil out in the world, and then I start reclaiming it, if I have unaddressed shame issues, the process of reclaiming that and looking at, well, what's my version of, of this evil that I see out there, I could go down a deep rabbit hole into feeling shame that I have evil. And that also disempowers me from cleaning up my own act. So in order to deal with evil the way that Lori and I are offering a reconceptualization of with you in this episode, it's really important to disconnect that this alternate definition of evil from blame and shame. Beautiful. Yeah, really important. Yeah. I think you should do the next part. Oh, sure. So connected with evil in the traditional versions of evil is something that is in the Western world most often called the devil. And there, of course, are other names for the devil. Uh, the, the most common alternative name for the devil is Satan. And Satan actually derives from a Hebrew word, which is shatan. So it's uh, Satan is Shatan in Hebrew. And uh, what, uh, shall I keep going with this? Uh, yeah, I mean, you can do the okay. accuser or I can, whatever whatever you like. Mm. Yeah, go ahead, D do that part. Yeah, well, I was just, it's it's quite simple. The the dictionary definition, because we want to stay true to our, <laughs> our definition thing, is that evil, um, or excuse me, the devil means one who is an accuser or a slanderer, so one who slanders or accuses, and you know we could also put that under the umbrella of being someone who is a who judges all the time, right? Like that's devilish behavior, so to speak. So, you know, these are things to know because there. What if there really is no entity that is a devil? <laughs> you know, that's that's the invitation that we're asking you to consider. Yes, and so inside of that. It's again about looking at what do we humans do uh, that on one level, it's not an external entity that's trying to do bad things to us, as in uh, an entity given a name like like Shatan or like the devil. On the other hand, there are accumulated 
dense energies that have been transmitted through families across generations that have that have been carried by us if you believe in the the notion of multiple lifetimes through through lifetimes if you don't believe in that just discard that part and that are carried through linear history in humanity unresolved trauma that has coalesced and formed as Laurie was saying earlier in the collective conscious and uh, conscious and the collective unconscious of humanity and that kind of energetic configuration or tangle of webs around us if you will and i don't mean literally around us but that's around our consciousness collectively that if that gets coalesced and materialized into a figure called the devil we can never unravel it we can unravel malevolent energy structures uh for example there are there are electromagnetic fields in the earth called ley lines and ley lines are configurations of electromagnetic energy that have negative impact on the electromagnetic fields of living creatures including humans uh those ley lines i think are important for people to know they exist and to know how to recognize or avoid or things along those lines. But if we turn things like that, I'm just using an example to make a point. If we turn those things like ley lines into a figure like Satan, a figure like the devil, then it's all sinister out there and I can't defend myself and I'm helpless or I have to slay the devil and that misses the point because it it's a way of understanding evil or misunderstanding evil that disempowers us exactly and you know that that is the design of having something like a devil or something that's evil is it, it's a um it's a way of disempowering humanity right so we we want to talk for just a bit about how to bust bust myths about evil and break free from the delusion that there's nothing that any of us can do. We we've sort of been talking about it the whole time. But before I say anything, I'd like to read, you probably have heard this. Um, it's the Native American grandfather who's having a conversation with his grandson, and the grandson, you know, wonders um about these two wolves that the grandfather is talking about inside of him. So the quote is. It is as if there are two wolves inside of me, and one one wolf is good and does no harm. He lives in harmony with all around him and does not take offense when no offense was intended. He will only fight when it is the right thing to do and in the right way. But the other wolf is full of anger. And the grandpa or the grandson says to the grandpa, Well, how do you know which wolf will, you know, will act up at any given time? And the grandfather wisely says, It depends on which one you feed. So we're, you know, we're big believers in making um, aware and attentive conscious choices about feeding the parts of our energy systems that are not what we've drug in from our lineage or from our generations and, you know, and from cumulative collective history of humanity. And it's another really important thing to know that the evildoers currently in and around uh, you know, and on our in our world, they actually can only operate from the fuel that we contribute, which is our anger, our fear, and our hatred. So every time we have a hate, a, you know, a hateful thought or an angry thought or a, a fearful thought, we're putting it into a gas tank, so to speak, that gets siphoned by the evildoers in the world. Now, is it bad if you have an angry moment? It is not. That's a natural human phenomenon for, for anger and, you know, those feelings of hate, anger, and uh, fear to flow through us. So the problem becomes when we start feeding that in ourselves, when we give it, you know, a, a room for rent uh, for free in our, in our, we're in our system, right? So it, it's normal to let those energies flow through. It's, it's uh, becomes a, a matter of healing when they get stuck in us. And, and so that's what we're talking about is noticing that and, and giving it the credence of healing that it deserves um, not just for a quick relief from it, but for lasting impact so that you're not one who carries this energy with you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Is there Can anything I you want to say? say something? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'd like to say a little bit about 
the Star Wars metaphor having to do. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah. Uh, so th- those qualities of fear and anger and hate, those are exactly what the qualities of the dark side of the Force are defined as in the Star Wars movies and the other parts of the Star Wars franchise. And the the thing that I I really want to bring into this episode about that in piggybacking on what you just said in specific is that a, a profoundly evil Sith, which is the opposite of a Jedi in, uh, in star Wars, who the character's name is Palpatine and Palpatine is the epitome of the ultimate of uh, star Wars version of evil of, of the, the dark side of the force of the, of the Sith. Palpatine, in order to gather more power and transmit more dark power to other people, he wants people to attack him. He wants people to hate him. He wants people to fear him. He he feeds off of fear, anger, and hate of others. And when he feeds off of that, he actually becomes stronger. That's the paradox that is really important to me that we convey in this episode on evil. If we meet evil out there with fear, anger, and hate, the paradox is we're giving evil exactly what it needs to magnify itself. It's yes. what it feeds off of. And that's a form of contagiousness that's negative contagion. Yes, beautifully said. And it's also important to note that life force itself is neutral. And so we're the ones with consciousness on a planet that we're calling Earth that gives qualities to this life force. And those qualities are even either going to be dark, dense, heavy, malevolent, you know, the things we've been talking about, or we're going to give those qualities, which they already are, you know, uh, life and harmony and peace and those kinds of qualities. And this is what the wise uh, indigenous grandfather was saying is mm-hmm. you you are the only one who can choose which of these wolves to feed but they both exist in all of us and you know we must be clear and conscious about about how how we do that and when we bump up against something that's dark and dense it's our job it's your job it's my job to tend to that healing and when we talk about the accumulation of density uh, we can exchange that energy for that we we can exchange the intensity and the density of that energy by way of light. We can transform it. We can alchemize. We can transmute that density by the use of our light and our own life force with the intention of the healing and the transformation. And this is the opposite of evil. And it's just like for anybody who's a Nordstrom shopper, which I'm not, but I do know that they have a very generous return policy. It's just like you go to the return counter and you say, I have this thing and it does not fit me. No problem. We'll give you your money back or you can replace it with something else. We're doing the same thing with our energy. I have this density. I have this suffering. I have this trauma. I have have this belief that no longer serves me and I would like to exchange it for something that works or, you know, like that. So that is really the opposite of, um, of evil. And that is a contagion of energy that is a fuel for life that is more on the, on the positive side of life. And I don't, I've said this before. I practically say it in every single episode. I have not found a way to do this kind of work without the connection that I have that I consciously cultivate with my higher presence and the invitation of the light from that higher presence into me and into the energy that I'm needing to transform. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so this positive contagion, if you, if you think about, so Lori, you said um, about the life force is neutral. Yes. And again, to just follow through with the star Wars metaphor, In Star Wars, it's called the Force, and the Force is neutral. The Force is either either utilized on behalf of higher love and wisdom, 
in which case in the world of Star Wars, that's what the Jedi do, like mm -hmm. Luke Skywalker, et cetera, et cetera. Or it's used on behalf of fear and anger and hate, the opposite of higher love and wisdom. And that's what the Sith, like Darth Vader and Emperor Palpatine, do. Yes, exactly. And so let's give some real world examples here. When I'm angry at the world, I'm fueling the 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 contagion of evil. When I hate my body, I'm fueling the contagion of evil. You know, when I am um, fearful of what is going to happen tomorrow because I don't trust the, my connection to to my higher presence, which is the higher love and wisdom that we've David just mentioned that we talk about, then I'm giving my life force away, the life force that is gifted to me for this life that's on loan to me. <laughs> I'm hijacking it and I'm sending it to a tank, a fuel tank that evildoers can you know, siphon the energy from and continue to do evil acts. And I want to say, and this is might be, might feel a little bold, but if you don't think you're a Jedi, if you're, if you don't think you're someone like a, an ascended master who walked, you know, the earth and, uh, and did good things like a Jesus or a Buddha or any other ascended masters, if you don't think you're one of those people, you're wrong. You wouldn't be here today on the planet if you weren't one of those people. Your soul would not have allowed you to incarnate unless you were one of those souls. So the the thing that we must all do is take off these blinders and and toss out, cast out, I think the Bible says, cast out these ridiculous stories that we make up about how we're so lowly and we don't have the capacity to be a Jedi and wield our light when in fact we do and we're supposed to be doing that. In other words, we're all Jedi and many of us are just walking around in the world pretending we're not. Exactly. Stop <laughs> pretending. <laughs> exactly. And if I can just briefly do one other Example yes. to yes. to ground this in uh, in the everyday. So there are particular individuals and groups in the world. Thank goodness, not many of them, but there are particular individuals and groups in the world that I judge to be evil. Now, the purpose of this episode is not for me to go into who those are because that's not relevant. What's relevant, and the reason I'm bringing this up, is because when I catch myself judging specific individuals or groups as evil, if I don't take that judgment to higher love and wisdom to be reframed, not as an act of pretending or denial or you know, blinding myself, but to to be able to see and look upon those dynamics in the world, in society, in certain leaders, through the eyes of love, uh, higher love and wisdom. If I don't, if I don't do that, then I become negatively contagious. I actually, my anger and hatred toward those that I view as evil, actually feeds them energetically. Whereas mm -hmm on a practical everyday level when i am aware that i'm judging an individual or group as evil i ask higher love and wisdom to show me what function what higher function they don't even probably know they're serving in the evolution of humanity and so when i look on those that i judge as as evil through the eyes of, of higher love and wisdom, I no longer have fear, anger, or hate about them or toward them or in reaction to them. I have this sense of, oh, I wish, I, I wish humanity didn't need to suffer more deeply before we collectively wake up. And if collectively we need to suffer more deeply, even though certain individuals have reached a tipping point and they're no longer suffering. If collectively we need to suffer more deeply at the hands of these quote unquote evildoers in order to finally reach a point where we wake up and reconnect with the higher love and wisdom that we never left, but we're pretending we're disconnected from, then okay, bring it on. Let's get that 
happening as rapidly as possible so that we no longer need those projected outward evildoers to wake us the hell up. Yeah, beautiful, of course. <laughs> so let's just talk about a couple of takeaways. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think the first takeaway is what we started with, which is this idea that actually evil as as a as a definition is is just the energy of being off the mark or being under um a burden that isn't really our who our higher self is but yes it is part of the collective consciousness uh you know the programming the matrix if you will but it doesn't mean we have to stay there and we don't have to keep projecting that there is something evil outside of each one of us and that our only job is to tend to what comes up. You know, as David was saying, if if you're seeing something in the world and you do fear, feel anger, hate, or fear, then that's a healing piece for you. That's that's energy that is yours to return to life. And, you know, we, we talk about in other episodes and David mentioned one of the ways he does that. And I do the same thing when something shows up in me, I call my higher self in and I say, here's something I, I, I want to give this back to you and, and please turn it into a more serving energy, you know, a, a fuel, a nourishment, if you will, like the feeding of the wolves that will um, support me in honoring life, not being, you know, not the opposite of that. So um, that would be one of the first takeaways, I think. And a uh, takeaway that I'll offer on a practical level is watch for notice be awake about when there is a congruence a match between your higher loving intentions and the impacts that you're having on yourself and on others and be equally aware without shame with curiosity about when there's a disconnection there's not congruence there's not alignment where your your higher intentions are not being effectively expressed in ways that have positive impact on yourself or others. And when there's a disconnect between your higher intentions and your unintended negative impacts on yourself or others, that's your opportunity to look at the question of, did I unknowingly disconnect from higher love and wisdom from top, from source? Uh, am I unknowingly trying to uh, illuminate for myself a piece of trauma, a piece of baggage, a limiting belief, uh, a block that mm -hmm. stands between me and alignment between my higher intentions and my impacts? Turn yourself into a, into a learning laboratory. Remove the shame and replace it with curiosity, with a desire, with a commitment to, as much as possible, align your higher intentions with the impacts that you have, and to notice when that is not aligned, and do the inner work, whatever that is that you need to do, to realign your higher intentions and the impacts that you have. Beautiful. 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 And I would say just to, on, you know, uh, just a last thing on that is the only way we can really do that is by staying present, by the practice of being present. And when evil like energy shows up in your awareness, our utter terror is that it's going to take us down. But if if you practice this a little bit and you stay present with it, your heart, not your head, but your heart will teach you how actually easy it is to transform, transmute, and alchemize that energy. And then you will feel liberated. And the more you do it, the more liberated you feel, and the more you realize, oh, there's nothing to this evil business. It's just energy. And I get to be a good manager of my energy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. A good manager of my energy and a good steward and catalyzer out in the world because yes. I am I am acting through love, higher love and wisdom rather than fear, anger, and hate. So with that, I will say what Lori said at the end of the last episode, which is uh, just as was the case here, uh, we, we didn't know at the end of our last episode what we were going to talk about during this episode, and it dropped in in between finishing the last episode and this one. So again, we're currently awaiting guidance from the one thing, 
from Higher Love and Wisdom about what our next episode should be. And we're looking forward to discovering what that is and offering it up to you. Meanwhile, we enthusiastically invite you to visit totpodcast.net, the, the website for this podcast, T-O-T podcast, the one thing, totpodcast.net, net, to let us know your comments, questions, requests for future episode topics, and any other feedback you may have. So until next time, remember to keep dancing with your better half, the one thing, so you can keep living more and more and more fully as what we call homo spiritus. <laughs>